All right, so the reason why I got this ECS tuning billet breather adapter hose for the PCV valve area is because this part right here is actually leaking. So this is the area right here. This part right here is going to be replaced. This whole hose right here, it connects right there, as you can see. <clears throat> but as you can see right here, that little puddle of oil that has been leaking from this area. Now, I don't know if there's a crack in the hose or if the seal is bad because there's a seal on the inside right here that connects the, when these two pieces connect here together. It's a little rubber washer seal. Um, I don't know if that is broken or what, but you can see all the stuff around here is just like that's all oiled up right there, like that, like that. And because of this, it's going down my block. It's all going down my block down here and it's dripping on the ground. It's just a very, very minor leak. Like I've only had to feel uh, about maybe a quarter, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a liter not even that, maybe like a sixth or a fifth of a liter of oil. I've only had to fill it in the last oil change, which I've now, I just bought some oil from ECS Tuning as well, and I'm going to do an oil change. But um, I've gone about 11,000 miles on this last oil change, which is, I usually do like 10 to, to 12 anyways, and it's been running perfect like that. But um, yeah, only like a fifth or a sixth of oil I've had to add to it. So the leak isn't like super, super strong. Like there's not like oil all over the, the, the driveway or whatever, or the garage floor. But I do put some cardboard underneath the car so that it doesn't leak onto the nice, you know, garage floor or driveway. So when it, when it's sitting at night. So that's why I've decided to buy this kit so let me show you the little kit that uh, i bought from ecs tuning it's billets it's braided it's pretty cool and it was actually cheaper than the oem plastic piece so i'm like well i need to buy a new piece anyways right the oem plastic piece was like 120 or 130 dollars don't quote me on that um, but that's what it was on ecs tuning i didn't check any other sites because i just didn't i was you know just checking ecs tuning at the time um, but this billet piece was actually on sale for a hundred dollars and change. So it came out cheaper and it's a way better quality piece. And if I ever do a catch can in the future, which I don't plan to anyways, but if I ever do, like if I just get this idea to do one, it has all of the connecting points to add a catch can to it, which is really cool. So, um, yeah, let me show you the, the piece right now. All right, so here is the ECS Tuning Billet Breather Hose Kit. Um, as you can see here, everything is made out of billet aluminum. Really, really solid looking pieces. Um, this one has a couple O-rings in it. And then this part, which is really nice, it has the connectors on the end that spin on both on this end and on this end and those will just thread into each other but that looks like a solid piece um <clears throat> it comes with uh, some blue thread locker and these two little bolts right here those bolts are going to connect to this part right here i believe up there and this part is going to go to your pcv valve which i'll show you so it'll be basically if your pcv valve is right here on top of the engine block uh, just like the OEM one it goes in like that boom it snaps in there and then this piece I need to remember to save that o-ring washer because it just falls out so I need to put some grease or something on it for it to stay in there because basically I'm gonna be going in like this like this putting those two bolts on top of that with the thread locker all right, and then this part is gonna be the 
the bolt that you come that comes from the OEM part, which is this bolt right here. So you're gonna keep that, and that's where it's gonna go. And then that washer is gonna be in there. And then basically this is going to go in like that, boom. And then that is gonna go on top of the turbo inlet pipe. And this connects to the turbo inlet pipe like that, boom. You're gonna put this on there, just like a little safety you know, thing to hold it on. And then you're gonna thread this into the top of this. So that's how it all goes together. So I'm gonna wait for my car to cool down and then uh, yeah, go from there. All right, I'm going to show you what I just did right here. I'm not gonna show you taking everything off with my hands because I record with my phone right now and I just don't have like a, a stand or anything like that to hold my phone up while I'm working on the car. So I'm just gonna do a couple things and then I'm going to show you what I did and then move on to the next thing. So basically what I did right here is I removed the wiring harness to all of the ignition coils because I'm going to um, take this ignition coil off. Maybe this one too, I'm not quite sure, or maybe not either one. I'm gonna to have to figure that out. I'll let you know um, in the video if I do or not. But I wanted to get rid of this so that I had more room to access all of this right here because the new one is actually gonna be going over the top of the coolant pipe right here, I believe, and then fitting onto the inlet pipe over there. So I just wanted to have a little bit more room, but to remove all these, of course, you gotta take off the little, you know, nuts to the top of your ignition coil holder um, bolts right there. And then you want to remove all the connectors to the ignition coils and all of the uh, grounds to the ignition coils that are sitting on top of each one of these. And then back here, you have your little solenoids and stuff. You want to disconnect all of the plugs back here and over here um, to your diverter valve and all the plugs, basically all the plugs. Then one of the magnets over here, the cab magnets, you want to disconnect that plug. And then when you can disconnect all those plugs, you can basically just lay that um, to the back and out of the way. All right, so what I did next is I disconnected that connector from the inlet pipe right there. So you have that disconnected, okay? So it's free. And then what you wanna do is you wanna disconnect this part, with, take that bolt out right there, disconnect this part, and then push that out. It's kind of a weird fitting, but what I do is I basically pry it up right here, okay? And then I push. So I pry and I push out. And then that seems to be the best way to take that out. I'm not going to reuse this. So yeah, I didn't really care if I was going to break it or not. I didn't break it, but you might want to be a little more careful if you are going to reuse this product. Like if you're going to be installing an inlet pipe or whatever, um, you're going to have to remove this from the OEM one and, uh, and do all of this right here, what I'm showing you anyways. So you might want to be a little more careful than I was. Just be a little careful with it and you'll be fine. It'll, it'll pop right out. So from there, you just, you know, you just take it all, get this out of here. Boom, boom, boom. Twist it, twist it, twist it, and it comes out. So let's go ahead and inspect this. All right, so I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at this seal. And the seal doesn't look to be damaged, but it does look pretty worn, like old. Like, see that? Like, the markings, you know? Hold on. Get that. So the markings here, you can see the markings on there and it looks to be pretty worn. It, it feels dry and worn, so it doesn't feel good. There's another seal right there that looks to be really worn and maybe possibly um, bad because it, it's not circular 
100%. So maybe it's supposed to be like that, but it doesn't look like it's good to me. But anyways, I'm inspecting all of this. I can definitely see where the oil was coming out and everything. Um, but as far as the rest of the hose itself, it looks pretty, pretty good. Um, this one's a little banged up because this is the original one. 134,000 miles in my car. This is the original one. I've never bought in this piece before. So, and I've gone through three or four different turbo installs. I purchased two different inlet pipes. Um, and I've just, I've taken this on and off several times. So, yeah, it's going to be beat up a little bit because I put my pickup in here and I just yank it off. I don't really care. Um, but there is no oil leaking around my inlet pipe area. So, um, I know that connection, like there's no oil leaking around right there. So I know this connection right here is actually still decent despite it being, you know, beat up a little bit. While we're at it, let's inspect the PC valve itself. Um, that's just a bit of oil right there. Well, let's get the flashlight again. Where's the flashlight? It's right here. Okay, so turn that sucker on and let's inspect it. And you can see all the oil. I mean, the oil, the PCV valve is supposed to separate the, the oil and uh, go back into the engine basically. So there's very minimal that goes inside your turbo inlet that goes inside your turbo because you don't want all that oil going through your whole system and then just caking your valves. That's why we get so much carbon buildup. And that's um, partly also why people do uh, catch cans on their turbo cars and stuff. So... Um, that's a lot of oil. I'm going to clean that all up. I'm going to clean that up, and then I'm going to start installing uh, pieces here. As you can see, though, all this oil has just been dripping down my block, man. So I'm really excited to get this all cleaned up and uh, hopefully fixing the leak that I have. All right, guys, so I got this all cleaned up as well as I really desired. It's not, like, perfect, but I'm not trying to clean my engine either. Um, and then I got this piece right here installed onto my turbo inlet. Went on perfectly fine. Um, you're gonna press it down pretty much as hard as you can until it stops. And then you're gonna put this little clip in there right here. And uh, just uh, for your information, I have a CTS turbo inlet pipe and uh, it fits on this one because the OEM one fits on this one and uh, it should have fit and it did. Um, there is a, a review on ECS tuning that said um, that another guy had an e uh, CTS uh, turbo in that pipe and it didn't fit well. He must have been installing it wrong because mine fit perfectly fine. So uh, you just press it down and you put that clip in and it's gonna be open like that and then we'll move on to the next step, all right? All right, next thing I did is I prepped this piece right here by putting a little grease on there so it doesn't fall out like it would before. So it stays in place, okay? And then I'm gonna take a little bit of engine oil and I'm gonna put it around this rubber O-ring right here so that it slides in easier when I install it. And then I installed this right here, which are, and I put the, the blue thread locker in that is provided in the kit on it, on each of those bolts. And I used a number four and a half, I believe, on the Allen wrench here. Let's check. Sorry, not a four and a half, a two and a half. So this is a two and a half Allen and you just screw those in, super simple. And so I'm gonna oil that O-ring up now and go back and install it right here, uh, right there. That's where I'm gonna install it. All right, so I just installed this. Uh, also, I did decide to remove this ignition coil right there because it was just kind of in the way, just a tad, and it's so easy to take out. It's literally that bolt, that's all it is. This one right here, just a 10. Um, and so, yeah, you just take it out and yank it out. So I put this in and I pushed it back and it slid in perfectly. So I also left these loose 
not like loose, loose, but they're tight, but they're not like super tight because if I have to make any adjustments here, I'm going to want to be able to access these without stripping them, okay? So I left those, you know, they're tight, but they're a little loose at the same time, easy. And then there's the little, you know, here, let me get the light on there. There's the little part right here, okay? That the whole braided hose is gonna sit on or screw into. And uh, we'll, that will be our next uh, thing. Oh, actually, after I put the screw back in there, the little bolt, and then once I connect that braided line, then I'm going to tighten those bolts down and uh, go from there. All right, guys, so just like I suspected, when I slid this on and I tried to get this bolt in, um, it wasn't lining up perfectly with the PCV spot where this bolt is supposed to line up. And the reason was is because these were a little too tight. So I had to unloosen these, which gave me a little more wiggle room right here. And put that one in. And then I tightened these ones back up. Um, this is not the original bolt that goes to this spot. Somewhere along the, the five years about of me owning this car, I lost this bolt because I've had to take this original one on and off like five or six different times so it got lost somewhere so this is just a spare bolt that i've had laying around it's not the original one so i i need to get that one um but yeah so that worked out everything is buttoned down and tight now i'm just going to be putting the braid on and we'll see how it fits over here and i'll let you know all right guys so the very first hiccup because you know any job you do it's never that simple. Good thing this one was easier than a normal hiccup. Some hiccups last like an hour or two, right? We all know. Um, this one probably lasts about 10 minutes or so. Um, honestly, it took me about 30 seconds to a minute to actually fix it uh, when I figured out what to use to fix it. Um, the rest of the time is trying to figure out what to use. So anyways, <sighs> awesome connection, right? It's all good and stuff. But the problem is that up here in this area, because of that, that U-bend right there, and because it's all billet, it has nowhere to go. It has nowhere to flex on this, this area right here. All of this is flexible because of the braided line. But at the U-joint... It's not flexible at all. So you have to have the room to actually screw it on to the piece that you connected to your inlet pipe. Well, I don't know if it's a CTS turbo uh, inlet pipe thing. Maybe that's what the guy was talking about online who bought this, who, who also had the CTS turbo inlet pipe for this car. But um, right here up here in that area, um, that part right there, that part, you had no room. You had no room to get the get the the screw to screw down onto that part. Um, it would not screw on normally. It would just cross thread because there was no room because that's the firewall right there. That's the firewall. So what I did is I tore tore the the uh, firewall proofing right here. Um, I tore that to see if that would give me some more room, which it didn't. So I had to basically bang in the firewall, the actual body of the car right there. Um, and I didn't have anything to bang except this rubber mallet. And I used my half inch socket wrench right there. So um, I was just banging, boom, boom, boom. And literally probably a millimeter or two, that's all it needed. And I was able to get it screwed on. Um, perfectly fine, no cross threads or anything. So um, for those of you who have the CTS Turbo Inlet, that's probably what you're gonna have to do if you use this piece. Um, but every car is built different, so I don't know for sure. I know I had to and others had to as well that didn't have the CTS Turbo Inlet pipe. So maybe just this fitting is so snug um, that you're gonna have to do that. 
uh, because the turbo inlet pipe, um, the the little you know part for the PCV breather hose to to fit in fit onto it has like an angle and it's angling up towards the firewall just a tad and so that's the issue that you're running into but just a little mallet some bang bang bangs you know and you're good to go and it will fit on so the last thing i have to do is basically connect this part to that part right there boom and then put everything back on my uh, ignition coil and then my ignition coil harness so that's all easy stuff um, pretty much everything's done and then button it up start it and uh, see if there's any leaks so i'll go from there all right guys no this is not a previous edit at the beginning uh this is actually me taking this part off that part the reason being um i got that on there right but when this was connected to this it's it's in there it's tight it's secure this part would not thread into it no matter what angle i was bending this all over the place i was doing all sorts of stuff it would not thread in right it would just cross thread and so basically i was like i don't want to cross thread this brand new piece you know um so i took all this back apart and i put this back on so now that it threads on there perfectly and now i'm going to re-oil this seal put it back on there put these nuts back on there or these bolts back on there and I'm gonna put the blue thread locker back on and then do that. Good thing I know what to do, it's easy, but the thing about not having instructions from ECS tuning on this part, because they just come in plastic bags like this, that's all it comes in. The problem with that is you don't know the steps to do it. They probably don't even know the correct steps to do it, to be honest because I don't think there's a video online with them installing this piece. There's other people who have bought the piece who've installed it um, and they probably had to do the same thing, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, so that's the problem about not having instructions from a company that makes parts. You kind of have to figure it out on your own and sometimes you have to take parts off that you already installed, which kind of sucks. So it makes a pretty simple project into a very frustrating and long one because you're now you're having to do things twice and I hate doing things twice so let me get back to this I'll get this done in a couple of minutes come back to you all right so I got it all put back together everything is buttoned up the car is running as you can tell as you can hear and uh, so far no leaks down there no leaks everything's bundled up good to go right there no leaks here so i'm gonna go take it for a drive go from there all right guys so i took it for a drive just now and did a couple pulls and then i pulled over and checked to see if there were any leaks and there were no leaks which is awesome so i'm glad that I got that leak fixed. Now there won't be any oil going down the engine block onto my oil pan area and my transmission and dropping on the floor. So I'm going to continue to put the cardboard under my car for the next two or three days just to see if there's any residual uh, oil underneath the car um, that's there and that's wanting to drip. But after that's all done, I'm pretty stoked. 134,000 miles on my car. No leaks and it's a VW go figure <laughs> even though I have done a lot of maintenance and stuff to this car but I'm glad I got this part uh, it shipped really fast the quality is really nice um, it's stronger than the OEM and it was cheaper so all in all really really good I'm excited about it and uh, I recommend it to you guys who are looking to upgrade that part uh, it's cheaper so you might as well just takes a little bit more uh, work to put it on but once it's on it's on you're not gonna have to deal with any more leaks because a lot of us get those leaks around the turbo inlet and around the other end of it by the PCV valve itself so 
yeah, this will fix both of those issues and help you out a, a lot. Uh, thanks to ECS for making that part. Just follow the, the steps that I took and uh, and watch this video and some others if you need to. And yeah, so I'm, I'm excited I got this. And um, I will end the video off right here. Thanks for watching and tuning into my channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you like my videos. And I'll talk to you on the next one. All right, peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.